essential tool or harmful to a dog's welfare? Electric shock collars divide opinion. The Kennel Club says it expects the Westminster government to ban them from 2024. The Welsh government banned them in 2010 and the Scottish government issued guidance on not using them, which had no legal standing. Dave Templar has been training working dogs professionally since 1987 and is also a shooter. There might be a place in certain ways. I used to say, well, if, you know, if a dog is chasing sheep and the only difference between the dog being put down and, um, and, and being you know, sh shock treatment, which is a horrible thing to say, um, is probably a good thing. But really, it's not to do with the dogs. It's to do with training and breeding. If you were to take one of my dogs, the temperament they are, they can't take it. They don't need it, right? And in the end, you end up producing a dog that can almost take that punishment. The show dog community is leading calls for the ban. Kennel Club Chief Executive Mark Beasley calls the collars cruel and unnecessary and says they cause physical and psychological harm. The 2010 Welsh ban on electric collars has its critics. In 2022, the National Farmers Union Mutual Insurance released figures claiming that Welsh farmers lost more than £300,000 from dog attacks during the previous year. Farmer Gareth Wynne-Jones wants the ban reversed. Disappointing to hear um, that the English government are following in the Welsh footsteps with the banning of e-collars. I think, you know, as a farmer, that's seen quite a few horrific livestock attacks by dogs that it needs to be addressed. And, you know, anybody that's buying a dog should really understand what type of dog they're buying, you know, if it's a herding dog, hunting dog, and um, to get some training done. And e-collars can be, you know, a great way to prevent dogs from chasing sheep and livestock. And if we can get, you know, there's a lot of professional trainers that have said this, but government aren't listening. And the numbers of livestock um, attacks are still going up. Steve Moran has been training dogs for more than 30 years. He works with dogs from all over the country at his kennels in Cheshire. Steve, who runs Double Latch Training, says electric collars are no substitute for good training. The reason why people are using an electric collar is because the fundamentals have not been put into the dog. They've not got a bond with the dog. Why would you take a dog into stock when you can't even call it back in your own back garden? I've never had one. I've never used one. But I've seen them in action quite a bit. You know, in America, I watched them. I remember years ago, I was in uh, Memphis and I watched them do a massive demonstration of how to handle a dog and how to do this. And I was physically sick because you had a thousand people watching this, which think it was the norm. It's not the norm. If people understood what they were doing, it maybe it might be a little bit easier. So from my point of view, I think they're not necessary. They're certainly not necessary in the gun dog world. You know, the people with the power aren't listening to the people that have the problems. And why is this country in such a bloody mess? It's exactly because of that. Because they think they're doing the right thing, but they've got no idea of what's happening on the ground, in the fields. Sheep are being chased and killed and cattle. The Kennel Club says there is wide-ranging evidence demonstrating the detrimental effect that the collars have on the welfare of dogs. It says that in 2019, a study carried out by the University of Lincoln showed that electric shock collars compromise dogs' well-being, even when used by professional e-collar trainers and are no more effective in training than positive reinforcement methods. Gun dog trainers are split on positive reinforcement. And as reported in Field Sports News, Steve Moran is not a fan. But he is a reluctant advocate of electric collars. For the right reason at the right time, if that meant saving a dog's life, then after all avenue, avenues had been looked into, then and only then would I use it. But using the electric collar and letting the general public have an electric collar. I've seen more dogs broken than made with an electric collar, but I'm not, 
I'm not responsible for people's moral compass. And if people are going to go out and buy these, they must know that the damage that can actually be done. If a dog is aggressive, then you've got to stop breeding them. You've got to stop allowing people to own dogs that are naturally aggressive. If the dog, you know, the, the owner has to take responsibility, you know, you can't, it's no good saying, well, the dog chases the sheep over there, you know, let's put the dog down. It's the owner and it owns it. So somewhere on the line there has to be more education. You can't say, well, okay, I'll go home and electrocute my dog when it chases sheep. It was you that let the dog do it. The dog didn't know, it's just a natural instinct. You let it do it and it enjoys doing it, so it's great fun and I'll continue doing it. It's like training it to sit. As far as the dog's concerned, you train me to chase sheep. Why shouldn't I chase sheep? That's what you told me to do. So it's a very, very difficult one because if you, were, if you filtered it in, in a sense you said, right, okay, you have five years to, to breed dogs that didn't need it, then, then you could say, yeah, okay, well then at that two, three years or whatever it's gonna be, we now, this is the law, you can't use them anymore. If you haven't used it up to this date, stop using it. And these e-collars can help so much in prevention and it would save thousands of sheep's lives. Any dog that's chasing sheep, you know, there's, there's a possibility the farmer's going to go out and shoot it. And that's the last thing farmers want to do. The rumour in Westminster is that the government is listening to the show dog community at the Kennel Club and ignoring the advice of working dog trainers.